Hello and welcome back to youtube.com slash conforming to the mainstream. And today I thought I'd do my first ever real q and I have done Q&A of sorts in the past. I've done a 3am one. Um... I just... Wow guys, I got so many questions and I've done one where I asked the questions. What do you value higher, Harambe or the concept of Harambe? Concept. So you'd, you'd kill Harambe? Why are you doing this to me? <laughs> but I thought I'd do a legit one on filmmaking and creativity because I know some things about some of that. <laughs> I've been wanting to talk about the behind the scenes of filmmaking, writing for quite a while and I thought this is a good way to get that snowball rolling. Just a quick disclaimer, I don't really know anything about filmmaking or creativity, I just sometimes make things so you have been warned. Thank you for all the cues that you shot throughs with the A for me to ace. And let's get right to the cues. Hate myself so much. Classic Carissa asks, how long did it take you to learn to edit and what editing software do you use? So my native editing software is Final Cut Pro X. I did a little bit of Adobe After Effects when I animated this thing here. but that is the extent of my usage of After Effects. I have about two years experience with Premiere Pro, using it through university and also my work placement through university was on Premiere Pro. I like it, but I, I, I miss Final Cut Pro X's magnetic timeline, I'll be honest. For how long did it take me to edit? That is a surprisingly hard question because there was never really a moment where I woke up and was like, oh my God, I can edit now. Even now, like four years on, I'm still finding things that I don't know how to do and I have to watch kind of YouTube tutorials to help me get through certain stages and all that. Uh, I guess if I have to give a number, I'd say that for the first 20 videos, I was still having the, the tabs of tutorials open. Personally, I'm a visual and active learner, so really just throwing myself into it um, was, was kind of how I learned. Just jump into it. Let's just jump into it. Lily Like Pie asks, what inspires you to create? And then says some nice words. Thank you for the nice words. Uh, there's kind of two answers to this one. I'm inspired or motivated by <laughs> feeling the need to just get ideas out of my head, dispose of them and um, make them someone else's problem. I'm also motivated by my impending death. That's serious. I feel like uh, filmmaking is the closest I can do to kind of immortalizing myself in, in some form. That's really pretentious, but I gotta be honest, that's kind of the, the truth. Let's just move on. Saraminator asks, how's the violin going? <laughs> I still haven't fixed the broken string from January 2017. So I think that pretty much summarizes <laughs> how it's going. Andy Fraser says, I know it's cliche, but what camera do you use? Also, do you think equipment matters? Yes, thank you for asking this. Yes, it is a cliche, but I'm very happy to answer because that way I don't have to keep <laughs> answering. For the past three years, I've used a Canon 70D with a Sigma 1.4 30mm art prime lens. Wow, that's a mouthful. Alongside that, I used my iPhone 6. However, I recently upgraded to a Sony a7 III. I use all the same lenses with an adapter and uh, to pair with that, I use a Samsung S8. The reason I upgraded was because my 70D broke. I am a big ambassador that equipment does not matter. Story is always going to be king. Factors like composition, sound, even dedication are going to make more of a difference to your storytelling than how many pixels you're shooting something in. One of my favorite videos on my own channel is 365 seconds of 2017 and that was shot predominantly on an iPhone. That project was also a good example of how it, oh, I hate, I'm gonna, gonna say it. The best camera is the one that you have with you. Yes, it's a cliche, but it is true. I could like talk about this for hours, but story has to come first. If you are really desperate to upgrade something, then upgrade sound. Hey, Von Yeya asks, is there anything you like to watch slash listen to whilst creating or to get into a creative headspace? Also, what type of equipment do you use while filming and how do you go about editing? I can't watch things, while I work because I just get too distracted, but I do appreciate listening to things whilst getting into a kind of deep work state. Movie soundtracks, instrumentals, or classics normally do the trick. I'm particularly keen on the Steve Jobs soundtrack at the moment. There's one song called Change the World, which just gets me going. That track in particular just, it, it psychs me up like I've had a double espresso. Change the world, 
that's the one. For equipment, excluding the stuff that I've already mentioned, I have Zoom H4n Pro, two tripods, one for the camera, one for the mic, battery powered spotlight there, and another one there. And if I'm doing something external and have a sound guy, I have a boom pole and an NTG2 to get that. That Ar Archie sound, that's not a thing. That's not a thing. For me in editing, it's all about the music. For montages, for example, I select a song and then take the clips and normally put them out chronologically to start with. And then I cut them down to any distinct beats. Uh, snares, even just clicks in the song. From there, I can then play around with them. For instance, in May's PMS, that's quite a good example of where I found moments that work in the score that mirror the visuals. For more fictional based stuff, even things without a score, I still use music. I only discovered this quite recently on my <laughs> on my dissertation film. We had this argument uh, confrontation scene that didn't really have any pace or rhythm to it. So we slapped on Jesus Walks by Kanye West and then cut to the beat and then we removed the song and it had such perfect pacing all of a sudden. <laughs> it was wild. <laughs> Pathswatts asks, do you have a standard process you follow when making movies slash videos, or does having a standard process mess with the creative part of the process? That is a banging question. I guess you could lull into the more formulaic style of creating if you have quite a strict structure, but I mean, I guess I do and I don't. I'm a big believer in having self-inflicted rules because without them the kind of unlimited possibilities of creativity can be really really overwhelming for me. I don't mean like I have unlimited creativity I'm just there's so much you can do that I have to kind of dial it down to then have the ball rolling. Just, I hope that makes sense. And the best thing about creating rules is it limits you but also, once you've made those rules, you can then break those rules if you have to, if the, the story needs you to. So in terms of my process, using December's PMS as an example, I had the idea to make a video about remembering the past and enjoying the present and looking forward to the future. From there, I found a structure that worked, so the kind of conventional three-act structure of beginning, middle, end being past, present, future. And then from there, I was able to create the rules of that. So the section that was called past, everything had to be spoken about in the past tense then the present was the present tense and the future which is hard to do was the future tense for me having rules like that kind of gives the work a bit of a spine that i can then build upon and that that's when the kind of crazy ideas come out like for instance in the present section i'll do a christmas scene because presents and presents are gifts <laughs> and maybe in the past i went to see the last jedi because of the quote let the past die and it's all about moving on from the past and yeah I don't know if that's actually answered the question or that's kind of just spun more questions. <laughs> I'm just gonna move on, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Lewis B 239 asks what do you do when you're not feeling so inspired? Also what are your top three albums? Well recently I've started forgiving myself. I found that I couldn't get inspiration from just sitting around waiting to be struck or tensing up trying to feel inspired. It's kind of like trying to go to sleep and you're trying so hard to get to sleep that it just does the complete opposite effect. Instead now I forgive myself. I tell myself it's okay that I'm not feeling creative right now and if I need to I will go for a walk or do some exercise, anything that will clear my head. So when I come back to it I can just try and again to beat the blank page. And the best way to beat that blank page personally for me is just to write why the project is important to me, why I want to tell this story, what I want people to feel when they see this story. That, that usually stokes the fire right back up. And my top three albums are Charles Childish Gambinos, Because the Internet, Frank Ocean's Channel Orange, and Kanye West's My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy. Corla77 says, don't leave YouTube, please. Um, alright. I won't. Ruth multiplied by Elizabeth asks, what is your writing process like? Ah, uh, this is gonna be a long one. Um, okay, so first is research. It very much depends on the project, so for now I'll say I research the core ideas of what I want to make. Then typically I do a spider diagram. Here is one I did for two years on YouTube, and that can really span from anything like quite intricate ideas, such as I want to evoke the theme that being on YouTube is a catalyst for being better, um, two really bad points, like, begin comically. 
start with a funny. <laughs> really at this stage, it's just about beating the blank page for me. And if I'm doing something more fictional, then this will be when I come up with kind of character traits, character uh, themes, their, what I want their journey to do. It can be their personality traits, their intentions, their goals. The important thing is it's just rush. It can be anything, even just quirks of dialogue that might be interesting. From that point, I then try and figure out a beginning and end to the piece. Um, it's absolutely not a priority at this stage though. But it, if, if I know at this point, I will jot it down somewhere for like reference. Next I do the circle thing. I don't actually know what it's called. I just saw it on a Dan Harmon blog, but it has kind of eight points where the character goes through on their journey. I write down some kind of ideal character progressions, how the film is changing them, where I want them to end up, what I want them to learn from their journey. Then I just chuck it all together in one big brain dump. I think it's a Thomas Frank idea or maybe somewhere he got it from somewhere else, but it's just a big document full of absolutely everything from notes on the spider diagram to the character notes to just absolutely everything all in one document. Sometimes I even copy and paste Facebook messages and conversations into it that uh, are about the things I'm thinking about. It can be bits of random source material, it can be a poem that resonated, it can be the self-created rules for the project, the structure if I know what it's going to be, if not I will then look at the brain drop and try and figure out a structure. Sorry for hiccup. The brain dump is a proper mess, but from there, that's when I can kind of look at things and begin to plan it out. It's only once I've planned about 80% of it out do I start to write a script. That was long. That was long. Luna Lexiger H asks, what's your favourite vine? Um, <laughs> I guess my favourite would be the one where you take me seriously. Haramon asks, how do you keep your creativity up when it is your job to be creative? Because you're a film student, you know? I do like to try and keep my passions and professions separate, but as I move into more kind of YouTube client-based work, the lines are getting a tad blurred. For me, it's just making sure to take a step back and have breaks when I need to, and just be wary of any impending burnout. Another way I've kind of separated the professional and the passion projects is in the passion projects, that's where I'm more like to take risks, things I've not done before, and in the professional work, that's when I can then apply the risks that worked well because I know I can sort of do them now so but yeah good question James Backman one asks if you could work with any director of your choosing dead or alive who would it be Paul Thomas Anderson Magnolia the master boogie nights there will be blood punch drunk love inherent vice and <laughs> phantom thread Paul Thomas Anderson hands down also hi James hope you're doing well in London. Lemon Zoe, or maybe Lemon Z03, what got you into filmmaking? Well, I did like a lot of silly films when I was little, some kind of Spider-Man fan films, that sort of thing. I decided to take film studies at A-level. I was actually talked into it by a, a girl I fancied at the time, but it had a practical component to it, and I just adored making things from that point onwards. I had one of the things I made in second year get entered into the, the college Oscars. It was, it was pretty lame, but essentially I told myself if I win an award, then I will start doing YouTube and do regular uploads for a bit. That's even lamer, but that's the that's the truth. That's the tea, sis. Yeah, I always wanted to be a musician, and then I always wanted to be an actor, and then a writer, and then a dancer, and it dawned on me that filmmaking kind of combines all the components and all the skills I had kind of built up for those different career paths. I guess it just all clicked, you know? Filmmaking was the Venn diagram of all my interests. Angela Innes asks, are you going to do another PMS? No, I'm not doing any more pretentious monthly scrapbooks. That is not what's next. Dorothy, but spelt with X's for some reason, like how to make things how? That's such a vague question, Dorothy. Why do you do this to me, Dorothy? Dorothy, I guess. I just try and beat the blank page. Um, I shut off any alternative from that, I, social media or internet if needs be, and I just gotta beat the blank page. And once I beat that one, I gotta beat the next one and, and so on. Fagra Hanif, how to know if film is really your passion or how to know if anything is your passion? I am not qualified to answer that question at all. I guess the first way I know that filmmaking is my passion is that when I'm working on something to do with it, I can just completely lose track of time. I hate the expression, do what you love and you'll never work a day in your life because it's just, it's just bullshit. I've had to work intensely for filmmaking, uh, sacrifice my social life, my money, my health, pull all-nighters and I've even sacrificed more sensible careers. I've had to work so hard on filmmaking and I've not even made a dent on the filmmaking world, not even a scratch. But I guess I know it's my passion because when I finish a project, I get a sense of 
relief, yes, but also a sense of fulfilment and I'm just immediately looking for the next thing I can work on. I'm restless until I know what's next, so yeah, that's how I know it's my passion. Ruth kissed Elizabeth, where does your inspiration come from? Ah, damn, like everywhere. So for PMS, I really embraced the parody trope, so I would just see something in a film or TV and be like, damn, I like that. I'm just gonna rip it off. But outside of that, I guess life, really. I'm one of those cliche film people who has um, a notebook, I use Evernote, and just jots down when something clicks and feels like a good film idea, or even just little moments of dialogue I overhear that I think could really work, or just little moments that would be lovely in a film. And an idea can spark from anything, really, from wouldn't it be cool if this happened, to this sucked and really hurt my heart. I should make others suffer too. <laughs> I'm such a bad person. Hi, I'm Chase. Where is the UK creative filmmaking community at? My friends don't get film camera, film camera, film camera. Hello, I'm Sam. <laughs> the biggest communities I believe are in London, Bristol, Cardiff, I think for TV, Manchester, maybe even Birmingham, and Edinburgh's got a good scene. But I guess, ah, oh, no, I'm not gonna say that, I'm not gonna say that, I'm not gonna say that, I'm not gonna say that. Anywhere is good because of the internet. The small YouTubers community is pretty big on the filmmaking front, and I met and got to work with a lot of people from just chatting at Summer in the City. In fact, some of my firmest friends are people I met through Summer in the City. So then of course, networking events in your local area. Um, I'm really not that big on networking, but it's undoubtedly a good way to meet like-minded filmmaking people. Beyond that, Kahootify, if it's in your area, Kahootify is sick. I recommend it so highly. And also just to throw it out there, having friends who don't like filmmaking is not a hindrance at all. In fact, it's it's a blessing in disguise because it's a nice way to finally get out of doing filmmaking for a little bit and have a break. And also some of the best ideas I've had have come from hanging around with people who have no interest in films. They just say things and I just steal them. <laughs> I love having time off from talking about films and filmmaking and what lens this person used and why this person was nominated for an Oscar. It's, it is really refreshing. No shade film people, but <laughs> yeah. And that's that's all I'm gonna that's what I'm gonna answer, I'm afraid. Sorry if I didn't answer your question. Um I'm not really that sorry actually, that's a complete lie. No, I am, I am. I really enjoyed this actually, I really liked talking about the behind the scenes. I think it'd be quite interesting to make more things like this with more detail um, on filmmaking, kind of opening a bit more of a dialogue about the creative side of things, because it's refreshing to chat about this sort of stuff and I think it could be really helpful for me at least if I just talk about things I've done and why I've done them and kind of expand on that creative process. The best way for lots of people to learn is to teach, so we'll see. Watch the space. I might do something else like this if you want. Alright, that's it. That's all I that's all I got time for folks. Um That is so hot. Oh ow how long was I f ah ha, ha.